we're at a cave in the uh, southern Absaricas. Caves are notoriously hard places to analyze because of the rock fall covering up old strata. They're uh, hard places to excavate. It's a fairly big cave. It's large enough to hold an entire family. There is a wall or a fence or a fortification of some sort. Sheep eaters are known to have fortified caves and rock shelters, and they did that by leaning timbers up against the cave entrance and then covering them with hides or maybe even grass mats. We know the cave has been used by outlaws in the recent past, but perhaps in the, the not so distant past, it was used by the sheep eaters. Often, archeological clues can be gleaned from old habitation sites. These artifacts reveal a wealth of information about the high mountain Shoshones. If it follows the, the pattern, um, they'd have these stacked up so that the, would protect it from the wind so you got fire down inside with these, the rock wall. And then um, the superstructure that was built out of the logs would have been thatched oftentimes with ryegrass. This is excellent thatching material that can be gathered up in large bundles. At any rate, on top of the shelters, uh, whether they're conical timber lodges or uh, just lean-tos, these would have made a watertight um, layer. One of the reasons for theorizing this is that 100 years after anyone had been living in there, you could still find remnants of these plants growing around the shelters, even though giant wild rye doesn't grow there naturally. We don't know where the name Shoshone came from exactly. The, the word for grass among the Shoshone is sonip, and uh, there are people who reason that because they lived in grass-covered lodges that uh, sonip got the name Shoshone. Habitation sites are found in areas which provide shelter, food, and water. Though there is not a running water source in the immediate vicinity of this particular site, there are numerous catch basins in the surrounding rocks. We discover that this standing water in the spring is heavily used in places like this. This little naturally formed basins, yeah, the erosion in the rock here. They take on names in some parts of the world, and the Mexico and across here they're called Tanajas. Uh, but up here we just call them uh, you little catch basins. The basins surrounding this site would have provided abundant springtime water as the snow cover melted, making this an ideal habitat location. The, obviously the most impressive feature at the site is this large rock wall that's uh, built in uh, this U-shape uh, up abutting against the back wall of this little uh, nugget sandstone overhang. And uh, that's very, very typical of um, uh, oh, a cold weather uh, type habitation for the sheep eaters where they would uh, build a wall like that and then lean uh, pieces of uh, chunks of deadfall trees that they'd lean up against the side of the cliff and create a, a sort of a semi-conical half, uh, half round uh, superstructure on top and then thatch it with uh, grass on the top of that. 